so we've all seen super crisp, beautiful, enhanced drone footage. But what if you wanted to, say, switch up a bit? And this is where Dehancer comes in. Alright, hi, welcome back to a new video. I hope you're well. So if you're coming from the last one, then I'm still working on the lighting. It is going to look a lot better in the new year, I promise. So we're just going to work with the lighting that we've got at the moment. But that's not what this video is about. So today I've got something quite special for you guys. Today we're going to be doing some color grading with a product called Dehancer, which turns that crisp, sharp, beautiful drone footage into something that looks like it's come out of a film camera. So it's really nice, simple way to get some cinematic, beautiful looking drone footage. Now, full disclosure, they reached out to me and they asked me if I would like to try the product. No money has changed hands, they don't have any say in what I'm going to be saying in this video, but if you would like to purchase this product at the end, once you've had a go of it, because there is a free trial in the link below, then if you use the product code Butchy10 in the checkout, then you will get 10% off your purchase and you'll be personally helping me out as a little added bonus. I can't believe I just said that, that's the first time. So thank you Dehancer for providing me with this software for starting and doing this video. That was awesome to say, that was sick to say. So we're gonna jump into the editing room into Dehancer and DaVinci Resolve and go from there. All right, so we're just going to open up DaVinci Resolve, as you can see right here. And I did say I'll be working on the lighting, so just bear with me until the new year. But we will be opening up DaVinci Resolve and choosing a clip that you'd want to edit. Now, this doesn't have to specifically be drone footage. You can use any video that you've been able to film and edit on that. This is just the example that we're using today. So we're going to be using this clip right here. This is... Lago di Bres, which is in Italy. So now, as you can see, this is D-Log. It is completely unsaturated. It's just the, the base color profile. So we're going to go over to the color tab. And as you can see here, this is what we're going to be working with. We have got quite flat colors. Everything's sort of nice and even. So we're not going to be really having to work too hard. But we're just going to go over to the effects panel. If it's not open, just tap effects and just go all the way down to the bottom. As you can see, Film Emulation is Dehancer Pro. We're just gonna slide that over there onto that one. Now, as you can see here, we have got all these options. It does look a little bit intense, but it's not, I promise. It's actually quite simple. Now, this first bit right here is the most awesome thing about Dehancer, is that you can go in and choose exactly what camera profile you want to be shooting in. The team at Dehancer have made individual profiles for most cameras out there. so. That's pretty amazing that you can go and select whatever camera you've shot on and just be able to work exactly from that profile. So this was shot on the Air 2S, so we are going to be selecting all the way down to D-Log. And as you can see, it's adjusted the color quite nicely. It has added some grain, so I don't want you to be fooled. There is grain here, so it doesn't it doesn't make it look bad. So we'll get to that bit later. I'm just gonna turn it off. And as you can see here, if we switch it off, and on, it's more or less adjusted the colors pretty decently, but we are going to be modifying it. So let's start up here. From here, you can adjust all your usual exposure compensation, your temperature, your tint, all that stuff. I think it looks pretty good. I might just make it a little bit cooler, just down to there, 6.4, that looks nice. And down here in the film section, now that is the film that you're going to emulate. So I have played with a few and I think the Kodak Porter 400 looks fantastic. It's got that really nice soft, if I make it full screen, soft effect. It's really, yeah, it's softened up the entire image, which I think looks beautiful. Now you can go and choose whichever classic film camera you want, but I really like the Kodak 400, so that's why we're gonna leave it on that one. And you can sort of adjust the strength or the intensity of that filter just on this little slider, but I like it exactly where it was. Now we can go down here to film compression and we can adjust the white points and the black points just here. So you just have to click enable to really adjust it. And as you can see, just clicking it, it does 
iron out a lot of the overexposed points. Now, because this is turning into a film looking video, we don't want it to look too perfect. We want it to look a little bit imperfect, just like the film cameras used to be. So I'm just gonna turn that white point down. I want a little bit of an overexposed section because I just think it adds to the the different look, the, the ethereal, the old school look. I think it looks quite nice. We can adjust the tones, as you can see right here, so you can really, really fine tune it. You don't have to just sort of click enable and leave it at that. You can fine tune it exactly to what you want it to be with an added bonus at the end. Next, I'm going to adjust my black points. I traditionally like my shadows to be a little bit dark. You can we're going to brighten up that bit just there, just a tiny bit. Bring that white point down. That is looking quite nice. I like it just being a little bit overexposed. I like that imperfection. Now next, this is the cool thing. So from here, we can go into the print. Now this is what it would look like if you were to print it, if you were to put it onto some film. Now I'm gonna go Kodak Endura Glossy Paper because I think that looks super nice, as you can see right there. You'd switch that off, switch it back on. Looks fantastic. Now it is a little bit dark, so we will be adjusting that. But if we just go here to EV Comp, I can just expose it up a little bit more, adjust the contrast just that tiny bit. That's looking quite good. I'm going to turn down the saturation as well, just a little bit, and turn up the color density just to give it that slightly off color. I think that looks quite beautiful. So you can see every time, you can just turn off the node and see what the adjustments are. So it's still looking pretty pretty normal, like it doesn't look like I've completely cooked the image, which we don't want. Next, we're gonna go down to color head. Now this is where you can really adjust your yellows, your magentas, your blues, your all that, all that fun stuff. You can click gang and then you can enable. And if you click gang, then you can adjust everything at once. So you're not really having to fine tune everything individually. Now, put that back. Now, if you take off gang, then you can adjust individual colors, as you can see right there. So I'm gonna make the video just a little bit yellow, and I'm gonna turn the greens like that. And I think that still looks rather nice. It doesn't look too overdone, it just looks a little bit Looks a little bit good, a little bit good. And you can adjust the tones and adjustments here. I'm not going to do that because I think that looks quite nice. It looks a little bit good, as I just said. And we're going to go down here. You can adjust again, exposure. You can adjust the impact of it. So you can switch off, switch on. And I'm gonna leave it at around 65. That looks quite nice. Now here is what I mentioned earlier about the film grain. So you can go in here, switch on the grain. Now, that has applied it to the entire video, but if you want to just be selective about it, you can switch it off, for example, in your shadows. So the grain is only on the highlights, which is quite cool. You can add quite a very different looking effect to this. So I'm gonna bring that down to about an eight, bring that to about 24, because I don't want too much. I'll bring that down to about 10. I like grain, but I don't like too much grain, because then it just looks like of completely overexposed with a very high ISO. So a little bit of grain is good because it just gives it that, that old school look. Next, we're gonna go down to halation. Halation is in the old film days when you would get an overexposed part of the scene, which is why I chose this clip because we have got a bit of overexposed sections and it would create a little bit of a red tinge on the outside of your overexposed areas. So if I turn this on, you can see it's just given it that little bit of a an off highlight. And I think it looks quite nice. You can go and adjust everything right here, but I really like it just as it looks. I think it looks quite good. And then I'm gonna head down into Bloom. Now Bloom is nice. Bloom is proper nice. This gives it that proper Kodak film look. It makes it look, are you ready? Bloom. That soft, it just softens up all around here. So if I zoom in a bit, you can switch it off. It's just giving it that really nice ethereal glow. Now this works especially well if you're using a dark scene. If you're filming a dark scene and there's 
quite nice bokeh in the background with like the, the lights or whatever. You put the bloom on and it will give it a beautiful look. But we're working with drone footage here at the minute. So we can use what we've got. So you can adjust your bloom and on your highlights and your shadows. You can adjust the diffusion of it. I think especially with this shot, we're going to keep the diffusion quite high just because we don't have that much to work with. But I think that looks really good. Again, you can switch it off. Just see what you're working with. Still think it looks quite good. Here you've got vignette. You can add it manually. You can just go into effects and add it that way. But it is nice that there is just vignette in that one spot. You can just work through everything without having to add and adjust different parts of your clip. I really enjoy that. Next, we've got film breath. This is when the film was moving through the projector, it would breathe a little bit, sort of like this, sort of like with lens breathing, this is film breathing. So you can add that in and then it will sort of pulse so with this little pulse as the film is going along. And then lastly, we've got gate weave. Now this is cool because as film would pass through the projector, it would sort of bounce, it would move and rattle a little bit. Now, because it is a drone and it is incredibly stable, we are having to add in a little bit more rotation because that is what's going to give it just that little bit extra film look. Like you're in a helicopter and you're filming it from the helicopter or from a film camera. That's sort of the, the vibe that we're going for right here. And uh, lastly, we can go to output. This is cool. You can switch off the entire thing. You can see exactly how much and you can sort of like an opacity slider. You can sort of really fine tune just how much you want to add. Now I'm going to leave it at 100 because that's the what it looks, it looks nice like that. I think it looks quite nice. And then if you really like what you've done, you can save it as a LUT. You can, now you can just do it normally by doing it here, just turning into a generate LUT, just there, whoops. But it is nice that you can just export it as a LUT right here. And then if you want to sell LUTs or you want to just have an area where your LUTs are, then you've got it all set up nice and simple. All right, now that is all done. So this is the final result. Still really stoked that the Hansa did reach out and give me the opportunity to showcase this software to you guys. And if you would like to try it out yourself, the link is below and you can use the code BUTCHY10 at checkout for 10% off your purchase. And you'll be helping me out too. So it's a, it's a win-win, it's a win-win. You'll be helping out one of your favorite creators and you'll be also getting a awesome software at the same time. If you did enjoy this video, then please do drop a like down below. It is a massive help. And let me know what you think of the software in the comments because it'd be nice to get your thoughts on it personally. So do let me know. If you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then. <laughs>